What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of Third and Longhorn. Today, we're going to preview number five, Texas against Florida. I am joined to my right by Derek Johnson and Fozzie Whitaker, and to my left, Rob Babers and Jeremy Hills. And I am Nick Shuley, and let's get into it. So we've got a Florida team that comes into this game at four and four, but I will give them a little bit of credit. They have played probably the nastiest schedule yeah, that I've man. seen it out there. Been, yeah. They have their four wins are Samford, Mississippi State, UCF, and Kentucky, and their four losses are Miami, Texas A&M, Tennessee, and Georgia. Texas actually is undefeated in their history against Florida with the huge win coming in 1940, the last time we played them, where uh, Texas won 26 to zero. I did see a pretty cool stat from uh, uh, SI.com where since that game, the programs have combined for 1,285 wins, 34 conference titles, and seven national championships. What, so, what, was, the, what was the score to that game? A 26 to zero. Which at that time Fives, would be... did you have two or three touchdowns <laughs> in that one? Wow. Are you talking about NCAA? No. I thought he was talking about the video game. That was... Okay. All right. I thought he was talking right. about the video game. Right. in his leather helmet. <laughs> ready, ready to go. Uh, well, let's, let's just get right into it and talk about this one. Uh, give me your quick thoughts on the, on the game to start, Rod. Uh, I think for Florida, I mean, the main, I think, headline for them is the quarterback situation. Uh, we're not sure if it's going to be Aiden Warner, who's the uh, third string uh, walk on transfer <laughs> quarterback from Yale, uh, mm -hmm. which I don't know if you can get film on him. Maybe you can get some practice film or something like that. Uh, or it could be DJ Lagway. They have not ruled him out. I don't know how it could be DJ no, Lagway. Man. But Billy Napier said he did practice. Yeah, I'm sure he, he said did that. practice with the, I don't even I'm with well, you. I don't know. Did he say what he practiced? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't know environment. If you got if you got your helmet in your hand, that's yeah. I guess that's in yeah. practice. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he went through track. Yeah. <laughs> he went through track. <laughs> How <laughs> often? Because I don't know if you guys watched the game. I watched it. I remember the moment that he went down. Mm -hmm. He not mm -hmm. only went down, but they had to cart him off the field. Yeah. The players came off the sideline, yeah. all right, to like console him and comfort him, which we all know that's all obviously not a good thing. And then I think they prayed over him too. Usually when it happens, not saying it's the end of the season, but you don't play the next week. Yeah. Uh, so I think the likelihood of him playing actually are, it's really low, but Billy Napier is probably just gamesmanship. Sark did that, by the way, uh, when he had the mm -hmm. Arch and Quinn situation going on. So that makes sense. Uh, but I think for, for Texas, this is more about Texas coming off the bye week. They had their most physical game they've had all season long against Georgia. Go look at the injury report, man. They got a lot of guys, questionable, yeah. ton of guys that are out for them. Texas should be as fresh as they've been all season coming off the bye week and correcting some of the mistakes that we've seen plague this team over the last two weeks. So I think a lot of this is on how the offensive line performs in this game. This is an O-line game for me. All right, they, That's what most of the penalties have happened is on mm -hmm. that O-line. They've 18 in the last two weeks. Most of this, obviously the sacks allowed. They've had 11 of those in the last two weeks. And the push in the run game, it hadn't really come from the offensive line in the last two weeks. So I think this is a, to me, a, 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 a game where we want to see them bounce back. We saw Quinn bounce back versus Vandy. We need the offensive line to bounce back. Sark talked about them missing their mojo. This is a mojo game. They got to get it back in this one. In order to find that mojo, I think the emphasis also should be put on the fundamentals, right? Getting back to the fundamentals. How many times have y'all gone through a bye week and a coach say, hey, we just going to get back to the basics. Mm, We're going to focus time. on the fundamentals, yeah, right? Yeah. Everything that they talk about, the cliche type of what does that actually mean? Yeah. The details, right? And for the offensive line, the detail that they had coming into the season was on point. You yeah. saw them communicating well. You saw them not having the mental mistakes, pre-snap penalties. You saw them making sure whenever there was an exotic blitz look or something was coming on third down, they knew how to handle it and pick it up. And now we're seeing an issue where they're not doing that at the same level. And being able to have the extra time in the bye week, I think that affords them the opportunity to actually focus on those fundamental aspects. And it's not just for the offensive line. Obviously, the running backs are critical in the run game. The tight ends are extremely critical in the run game as well. And then the emphasis on the mindset of wanting to mash people, hmm. that has to be back instilled into what this offense can be if they want to prove that they can perform at the highest level toting the rock and being a compliment to what the passing game is. I think distractions also can be a big portion of where this team ceiling can be and how they perform this Saturday against Florida. CFP rankings come out for the first time. Mm -hmm. Texas ranked number five. 
slotted to be a number six seed hosting against Alabama for the very first opportunity to have college football playoff games held in your own stadium. Yeah. How does this team respond with that type of pressure on their back? They've already had an opportunity to be the number one team in the country, hmm. held it well for a couple of weeks, and then got embarrassed at home. Now you got another opportunity with something new and shiny, somebody putting that rat poison out there, as <laughs> Coach Saban liked to say, about how good Texas is, ranked number five, right? New kind of shiny thing for Texas to obtain, and everybody still believing in them ahead of several undefeated teams in the country. How does this Texas team respond to that is what I'll be curious about I, after this battle. And that's a, that's a good take, uh, Fozzie. I think they will respond well uh, because now they can breathe, right? You, you, you had OU, right, big game, regardless mm -hmm. if we beat them bad or not, the big game. Then you got Georgia, right? That takes a lot of energy, even though we didn't show up like we wanted to. It takes a lot of energy. And then you have to go on the road to play a scrappy, lure you to sleep type of Vandy team that mm -hmm. nobody beats, you know, Vandy by a lot. Nobody, everybody that plays Vandy, yep. you know, it plays a close game. So now we're back and, and you get this second bye week. I think we get, you know, more guys healthy, maybe Makuba back. And you get a few guys that can, that can chip in and get our depth back. But I think we have a new, it's not a come to Jesus moment. We have a new look on, on life right mm -hmm. now. We are number five team in the nation. We're going down as we win games or whatnot, but I think this week we're gonna. I think we're, we're gonna. I, I think we're gonna show up big, like the beginning of the year, and I think it's um, the the big jump is going to be offensively. Of course, we'll get into it, but offensively, I think we'll be more on than usual. Uh, uh, defensively, regard uh, what, uh, regardless of how the games went, defensively, we've been pretty consistent mm -hmm. at being a really really good defense. Mm -hmm. Offensively, uh, um, um, at times we don't play complimentary football, so that kind of gets overlooked, and defense uh, gets overshadowed by. Mm -hmm. Uh, the uh, I don't know what to call it, probably a lack of consistency from the offense. So uh, defense doesn't get that much credit. But defense has been doing their job. They're going to continue mm -hmm. to do their job. Um, but um, offensively, I think we I think we roll roll this week. I'm hoping. I like that. Where, Hills, what do you where, let me where where would y'all say? Because I've been giving the defense praise for a while now. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and, yeah, and we all say. Like, you know, the defense is balling, but then we skip over it, right? We start talking about other things. Yeah. Where would y'all rank our defense just at this point in the year? Rank it like where? Like like letter grade? Are we doing country. letter grades again? Oh, it's, it's, oh, it's, it's the best defense football. in the country. Wow. Pro, I think it is. Pro Football Focus has us ranked right now as number one. Yeah, it's the best mm. defense the in the number country. number one yeah. defense in the country. I was going to say top three. Yeah, absolutely. So when I look good. at that defense, I'm not looking and telling them nothing else other than thank you. Yep. That, that's it. That <laughs> yeah. is the level they're playing at. They are the number one defense in the country, number one graded defense in the country to this point. Yeah. Right? Let's be real. We got to clean it up on that other side. Mm -hmm. It's been penalties. It's been inconsistent play. It has not been complimentary football. We have not been able to lean the way we wanted to in the run game. We have not been consistent in the pass game the way we thought we would be. Mm -hmm. And the talent is there. The coaching is there. The bye week is the time, I believe, one, to get healthy, take a break. But as the more I think about it, I keep thinking, like, is it the pressure? Hmm. Is it the pressure to, to live up with the, to the expectation? Mm -hmm. that's, right? that's a different type of wear on you. Yeah. Yeah, it's a mental wear. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, is it truly, like, is it the pressure to be as good as you should be? All right? And, and then, like, all right, so if it is, and then trying to put... <laughs> Going many, many moons ago, not as not as many moons as Fozzy, but going back many, many <laughs> moons ago and then trying to put myself mentally in that place of carrying mm -hmm. that that oh, yeah. torch that of burden. Texas. Yeah, it's a burden. Right. it is right. pressure. Right. That we is, yeah. are Texas, yeah. like that whole situation, yeah. right? And I'm like, yeah, it's tough. It is tough, but that's why you chose here. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, that's right why you thing. came here. So we, we can't have it both ways, guys. We can't say it's tough, it's wearing us down, and then say, I want to go to Texas. So... I want to see how the offense responds to the pressure. Because yeah. I can't ask the defense literally for nothing else. What is higher than number one? Mm. I literally <laughs> cannot ask them for anything else. Yeah. I cannot ask them for anything else. Perfection. And the coaches can't yeah. suit up and play. Yeah. So, so normally your bulletin board segment comes against the other team. So this week your bulletin board is for the offense. I, 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 the sponsor, Jeremy Hills. Listen, I want to see us be – 
who we are supposed to be. Yeah. And I don't, and I say it all the time to DJ, all right? Man, we ain't got to be nobody else. Mm-hmm. We don't got to show up and try to outplay. We don't got to be, this don't have to be our best version of football. I just want us to be us. I want to see what that looks like against Florida. Yeah. You got a banged up Florida squad coming in, man. Yeah, man. The, listen, the football, the NCAA football guys were unkind to Florida. <laughs> They have played probably one of the worst schedules yeah. that you can play. Yeah, they, they and, probably. Yeah, the worst. To definitely. And, and, and to their credit, they have done so much better. I think than most people absolutely. thought. Even at four and four, absolutely. Like they still they had. Back, like, go back and look they, at they those took games. Tennessee to overtime. That's what I was about to say. Go they, back and look at the actual was, games. They, Georgia. Like, they, they were tied right. with Georgia with seven yeah. minutes left. Yeah. I mean, this team can play the, ball. The team, like, the they were closer team, than we were. To they, Georgia. they, they, they have, they have shown that they bout it. Now, do they got enough Ooh. to get it done? Eh. But they about they gonna show up. Right. Yeah. You gotta beat them because they they not gonna beat themselves and they they not gonna quit. Yeah. So you gotta beat them, right? Now they also shown that you can beat them. And you didn't beat them by what? What was that? Almost twenty. They whipped. Them it, you know they whipped them up pretty bad, right? So mm-hmm. it, it can happen. But when I look at Florida, I'm more so. <laughs> I'm more so looking at, you know, this is just the next team on the schedule kind of thing, and you gotta handle your business. But I'm the focus for me is on that Texas offensive unit. Like, what do you look like for 60 minutes of football at home against a team that you're supposed to beat? Like I say, Vegas don't make no mistakes, huh? Mm. 21 and a half. It's a big number. 21 and a half. Yep. A team that you at, at you are supposed – Vegas is spotting them three touchdowns and a little bit more on top. You are supposed to beat this team. Mm-hmm. What do you look like? How do you show up? And I, I, I can't wait for that to be answered. Well, we've already kind of segued into the offense. And I, and I, I think you made a great point. And, and Sark said it in his press conference. He said, I'll say this for you guys that have come down to the field in pregame. This will be arguably one of, if not the best-looking teams in our conference, as in player-wise, athlete-wise, team-wise. And, and, and Florida is. Like, they're all, they're all five-star recruits, four-star mm-hmm. recruits. You know, this, mm-hmm. is, this is a high-level team. And I think – one of the biggest things for the offense coming into this game is Isaiah Bond is now probable. I think I think everyone mm-hmm. kind of assumes he's going to be starting this game. Mm-hmm. But and you guys already covered kind of the penalty side of it. What else do you think is the key to beating? You, you, we we alluded to the fact that Florida's defense is beat up. What's the key to winning this game? And I'll kick that to you, DJ. Um, just for the offense. Find, that is. Yeah, trying trying to find our identity. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, we had it at the beginning. <laughs> we kind of lost our way a little bit. Uh, um, we know we have talent and depth throughout the whole offensive room. Um, I, I want to see him run the ball, man. I want to mm. see him run the ball. I, I'm not trying to, you know, fit a square into a, you know, into a circle. But I'm just, I just, I want to run the ball. That's it. Yeah. And this is a team. This run Florida defense is allowing 176 rushing yards mm-hmm. a game. They're allowing 230 passing, 406 yards a game, 27 points. This is a team that our offense should take care of yep. uh, but I, I do think it's it should and and will that's those are two different things and I think running the ball helps out everybody helps out Quinn it helps out you know, the offensive line being able to protect the quarterback because you know you it's just you, you got to run the ball and we haven't been doing that the last few weeks and this is a game to get back at it we're at home and uh, I, I believe in them we, you know we don't we're not loaded in the in in the running back room, but we have explosive players that can get it done. Yeah, and I I think if you can't come off of this bye week and run the ball right into that expectation level you're talking mm-hmm. about, be the running game that we all envision for the Texas offense. It's possible, guys, that this is what the running game is. Hmm. Yep. And I know we. Keep, I mean, we're this we're, is we're, what it is. Yeah, this is. <laughs> no, no, no. This is is. We have, I don't that. think we're. I, don't, <laughs> I know. <laughs> What is no, a, what's, I, what's a good running game? Uh, Oklahoma, for, Oklahoma for Texas, right? right. Is, the running game is just average. It's possible that it's just an average running game. That it's not what it was with Jonathan Brooks last year right, and right. TJ Baxter. That it's not what it was with Rojo and B. John. I'm not expecting You don't think that. they can do better? I don't, I don't think, think, don't think they can do better? The Nobody, it's too, it's too, was there. My point is this. That's why it's on the offensive line. Because I don't really the, – the, the, we, the reason that gotcha. the running backs are not extraordinary right now, that can be explained. Look at the injuries. I mean, gotcha. they've been hit hard by injuries, right? Um, the offensive line hadn't had any injuries. That mm. group has been together longer than any other group good point. on the team. Yeah. But I do push. And they got, and they got, and they got NFL players on, in, on the line. They got That's three good. NFL players on the line right good now. Point. So, so good point. So I push, I push back a little. So, so, so is it safe to say that a talented senior bunch is underperforming? That's what I'm saying. Mm. So I'm saying if they can't come out of this bye week and, and, and impose their will in the running game, 
maybe they they don't, they can't impose okay. their okay. will in the ring. Okay. But that's the best that we can oh, do. Oh, I know we don't those have are, a lot Those of are two different things. No, no, we'll finish this up. Let's finish it up. I just want to say, Rod, I feel like you're saying two different. You're not saying they're incapable. No, you, you're I'm saying not. that they haven't. They have. So you want me to <laughs> I- accept that a group that can is not? But we are. What game? What game are we on? Not, not game nine is. Seriously. Yeah. Bro, what are we? We're, 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 we're over halfway. We got a sample size already. No, we, no, here's, man, here's, no, here's we're going thing. back. Here's wait, wait, wait. Hold that thought. Okay. Hold that thought. <laughs> okay. We're gonna go to our first commercial no. break, and when we come back, we're gonna continue this. <laughs> Welcome back to Third and Longhorn, where we are debating. The running game slash offensive line for this year. Hills, I'm going to let you finish your point. Go ahead. My, my point is this. My point is this. If I have a group that has given me what they're capable of giving me yep. and it is still not up to the expectation that I have for that group, mm-hmm. I'm going to coach them hard, but I will accept that this is who they are. I'm going to make tweaks and changes on the back end to try to help them be successful. I'm going to do other things. I may lean into another group, but if I have a group, that has shown me what their actual ceiling is. And then objectively speaking, the league that majority of them say they want to go to has agreed with my expectation of them. <laughs> and I am not getting from them what I should. I am not accepting what they're giving me. Fair. That's my, like, that's in life. I am not going to lower the standard to your production when I know what your potential is. I'm not doing that. It's a collective. Yeah. That's the collective. That's <laughs> right, right. a commercial. That was nice. That was nice. I heard that. Was that was nice. nice. I ain't gonna lie. If I, if I told somebody that, they got fired. <laughs> <laughs> it was like I just blacked out. What did I say? All right, Afazi, to you. I do. I do want to push back a little bit on Rod and Jay to a certain degree that it does fall on the running backs some because. The running backs don't come to Texas, no matter what you are. Five-star freshman, four-star, three-star backup, red shirt, don't matter. You come to play and produce. The lines that Bijan and Roshan and JB had were worse than the line that these guys have now. Agreed. But what they did and what set them apart was they found ways to break tackles. We have not seen the breaking tackle, the make you miss ability at the rate that we were used to seeing. And that goes to the running backs not necessarily maybe having that super duper top tier talent. We didn't expect them to, right? Nobody expected to have a JB and a Bijan, but I do expect them to break more tackles than what they are. And that's why the run game is lacking the explosive that it is. It's because even if the linemen block the five down and they leave maybe one of the backers, mm-hmm. we're not making that backer miss. Yeah. And we always know as a running back, you got to be YOB. You got to be your own blocker yeah. at some oh. point or another, yeah. and you got to break that tackle. Mm. And I don't think we're breaking enough tackles in my mindset, and that's where I think the compliment has to come. The O-line, yes, got to perform better, but I think the running backs got to perform better too right. because there's more available to but them. Are we, but are we track. asking them to be something they're not, right? Yes. Like C.J. Baxter was the guy that was going to come in and be physical mm. and break tackles. So now we're saying, Jaden Blue, I know that you were going to be our guy to get out in space, to get out and be guys. And nobody put it on Trey Wisner or Jared Gibson to be that back. But now we're asking him to be that. So is that are we no, holding him to, to an I, 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 I would say, I would say to, to Fozzie's point, Breaking tackles looks different, right? right? I got you. Everybody does Saquon breaks tackles different right. than DeAndre Swift. <laughs> yeah. yeah, both of these guys are very effective at, at what making they, a guys person miss. miss. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. So, and then I, I, I push back on Foz, and it's probably some of my own bias. I've seen Jay Blue since he was a freshman in high school. Talent ain't the issue. Exactly. Ability is not. The we issue. know that. So when I look at the actual talent in that running back room, what T Choice has to coach. He, he got some guys that can go. Now, there's something missing. There something and I don't else. know if it's the cohesiveness, if it's, the, if it's off the field, if it's I, – mm-hmm. I don't know if it's a mm-hmm. mental block. I don't know exactly what it is because I'm not there, right? But talent is not the thing to point to, to then say, like, mm. you know, oh, we, we missing something. A group that we were missing some talent in that we went and got better at was, was our DBs got – Mm. night and day better. better. No now, question. part of that was because that defensive line edge rush got yeah. night and day better, no comparatively question. speaking, the last year. But when I'm looking at the talent drop-off from the last two years, we've had the number one back off the board in the draft to then this year and what we have available to us this year, it's probably not the number one off the board, but I wouldn't be surprised 
when playing up to the level that he's capable, mm-hmm. I wouldn't be surprised to see him being number three or number four, number two or number three, as far as backs yeah. that come off the board. Right, right. Like, the boy can play football. And I think that's some of the frustration. I think some of the frustration, back to our conversation, some of the frustration is like, I'm not asking you to give me something that you haven't given me before. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I would say this. I'm not saying the pieces are average. They are uh, the, the, the frustration is they're exceptional and extraordinary. Yeah. We, Look know at that. we know that. Yeah. yeah. But I'm saying now as a unit and their objective running the football, we must admit the results are yeah, that right. they are average. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I'm just I saying it, if I think Sark's accepting that too, that's why you get all these detached screens everywhere. Mm-hmm. That's why you get an extension of the run game, which is you know what? I'm just gonna throw it out to the flat to Jaden. That's kind Instead of what of we thought though, right? Coming yeah. into the season. Yes. We kind of yeah. expected that. Yeah. yeah. So but, I'm just so I I I I didn't mean to, you know, disrespect. Oh, no, 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 I don't think any of us are disrespecting any of them. We call it man, listen, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, you take the longhorn off the helmet and you just call it a burn on his jersey and you judge some football film, right? This is what they putting out there. Yeah. Well, yeah. Wh- where's that highlight reel run this year, right? Like, JB had tons of those. Bijan had tons of those. Roshan mm-hmm. had tons of those. Bunches of we, them. We haven't had our, – our big is our biggest run this year still Arch Manning's run? Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Is that the biggest – the longest rush of the year? It's got to be. Yeah. I think it is. Yeah. yeah. But Trey, I'm not Trey had a couple in Trey, Trey had the Oklahoma Trey had, like, right. a 20 – Trey had that But it wasn't 40, nowhere 40, 40, Was it a 40? Yeah, yeah. 40 and 30. But, yeah. Orange, but, Orange, but yeah, yeah. But it's it's crazy yeah. to think about when these years we had, you know, Jonathan Brooks with 60-yard runs or 70-yard runs. He was busting. And some people – there are some people that believe that the adjustment to the SEC is just – this what is this is part of it, right? Yeah. That they're just bigger bodies. They're more athletic. And there is a transition. Even though every team's not Georgia, it's still bigger, more athletic by the bodies than you play in the Big 12. And probably then you play. Now, against Michigan, Texas didn't really run the ball against Michigan, guys. They they, they whipped Michigan, but they they whipped them schematically. It was strategic. They didn't really line up and just run the ball at them. I don't know if we have that. And and I will say, we've been a lot, and and not not officially on paper, but to come out of games, we're passing way more than we have in the past, right? Yeah. Like we flipped a lot of what we do. And so I think part of that is how we're calling the games as well. Mm-hmm. We're not relying as heavily on the run. We are, because, you know, making the short because passes. Because Sark knows. Screen. Yeah, maybe. Well, he's, 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 like, he's like, man, I ain't lining up trying to run the run. He's a smart, but he's, he's smart coach. Yeah, he's you, got smart. Your, you got your best he's players yeah. on the yeah. edges. Making the best plays. Yeah, yeah. So Sark and if knows. Quinn is your best player, then you're going to feature the offense and cater the offense around. So is that on the running back? If we're if we're pounding it more to the wide receivers, is that on the running back? Well, that, it's Gunner Hill. The passing game period is your strength. Yeah, that's what you have to rely on. We never Colt was here, right? Yeah, yep. and, and yeah. Jay Hills and I, yeah. we've been a part of it. We just came off of having Jamal. Yeah, Jamal went for sixteen hundred yards. Mm-hmm. Dope Walker, fine. like all of those things, went and got drafted, ran everything. But Colt was young. Yep, that was Quinn. He had Bijan. He did. Bijan was the guy doing it all, and Quinn was young. And now we see year number three, year number four, Colt. Freaking breaking the wins record yeah. and the completion percentage. That's kind of the same evolution. And we had a running back by committee type of approach because the emphasis was not on toting the rock. Yeah. It was on getting it to Jordan Shipley, getting it to Quan Cosby, getting it to Malcolm Williams, Brandon mm-hmm. Cobb, like all of these I, guys in space. I still think we should major in in the pass game because we right. that, that that's where we that's where we um, have the most talent at. But you sh- still sh- should be able to find a way to run the ball efficiently, mm-hmm. right? That and that helps your offense to get drives going. You mm-hmm. know, get you know get out of third and long, and yeah. that's all that stuff, man. But yeah, um, yeah we. I, I, I'm still. I, I'm just hope not that we run the ball for 200 yards. I'm just saying that'd be nice just, though. Yeah, would be nice. <laughs> we we'll take it. But, I will take but it. But <laughs> just just run it more nah, efficiently. I, I feel you, DJ. Right. Yeah. I think it's a. I think it's a distinct difference between choosing to pass and not being able to run. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. I think that's what we're talking to. Yeah. Like, I'm not. Sark know what he's doing. Brilliant offense of mine. Yeah. I, like, I'm not ever gonna question it. Like we should probably lean towards what we're leaning towards. Yeah. It, but on third and one, when we when we need one and we can't get one, that's an issue. Yeah. You know what I mean? With the big on, humans. On second, yeah. And we're not running on second and seven. Yeah, on second and seven yeah. when we want it to be third and three, but now it's third, it's third and six. Yeah. That's an issue. Yeah. Like, you, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. and that's, I think that's what, that's what we're looking for. All right. Well, let's put it, let's kind of put a bow on the Texas offense versus the Florida defense. But, uh. Florida is a team that tur- they can turn the ball over on you. They have nine interceptions this season, and they've had, I believe, they've had six in the last two games. 
Uh, yeah. So they've they've definitely can Carson can, Beck. Carson Beck. Carson Beck. Can <laughs> I know. He can threw, I was just going to say that. Those, but those interceptions. You know what's, you I'm know like, what's man, interesting is a couple was... of those were tips, and they got a lot of tips on Carson Great Beck, point. and we've mm-hmm. we've had some issues with that. Great I will point. say, yep. listen, guy, Carson Beck. He he had two more out there that should have been. <laughs> yep. Uh, <laughs> like I watched that whole game. Yep. Mm-hmm. I will say, I think this is this could be a really big game for Gunnar Helm. I think that mm-hmm. that he like you, you've seen some tight ends have some success over the middle and kind of leaking out on some of those routes and Georgia mm-hmm. did it with Delp and some of them and I, and I, I could see that happening but they uh, obviously we talked about how banged up they are one notable person to watch I know you guys know this is Desmond Watson who the mm-hmm. the gentleman who is six foot five 449 pounds Good that is wow. not a mistake on Good the line uh, and uh, they and they've got they're banged up Devin Moore their leading interception guy he got injured yeah, on, he on that on, on that pick and yeah, he's yeah. Uh, he's out with the knee injury so and quite a few other guys so we'll see what what happens there but let's get over to the other side of the ball and talk about the Texas defense versus the Florida offense. You guys already talked about Aiden Warner likely being the starter with DJ yeah. Lagway out. And uh, yeah, I think this is a team that has, they kind of, they, they, a little bit of a running back by committee. They yep. got some mm-hmm. solid running backs though. They and it, even, even with the, some of the injuries they've had, um, I want to kick it to, let's go to Fozzie. Give me your yeah. thoughts on, on the Texas defense versus the Florida offense. For me, whenever I assess where Texas kind of needs to prove themselves is continue doing what they're doing like Jay Hill's already talked about uh, but red zone areas of opportunities that they can continue to increase their productivity um, and really stifle what Florida wants to do that's the well, best way is don't ever let them get in the red zone right <laughs> let's, yeah. let's, uh, let's not throw that out there um, and, and, and say because this defense they possibly can do that against mm. a struggling offense but at the end of the day, I, w- I would love to see opportunities where we've seen them take the ball over or, or create turnovers in the red zone. We've seen them bow their necks up, force field goal attempts. Like, keep that trend alive. I think that's something that bodes well for the future trajectory of where this team wants to go. If we're talking about SEC championship opportunity or if you're talking about hosting a playoff game or, or playing in a playoff game wherever Texas ends up then that defense is going to have to perform at an elite level. In general, on third downs, that's always a given. Stopping the run, that's always a given. But the red zone is where you're really going to see the tide change for the better or for the worse in a team if they can really bow their necks up and stop. Mm-hmm. Rod, yeah. well, go ahead. DJ. No, no, I just want to add to that. that that's exactly right. Um, coming on the road, Florida, with, with eight in the third, the third quarterback, Mm-hmm. They're going to run the ball. They're mm-hmm. going to do simple yeah. stuff. Yep. This will be his first start. Uh, we get after quarterbacks. We get after offenses, you yeah. know, in DKR big time. Um, the thing about Florida's offense uh, that that we need to – not that I'm concerned about it, but we need to be on par with on the defense side of the ball, they do a lot of shifts and motions. Yeah. Yeah. And then so they break out into that. empties. Mm-hmm. Oh, man, it's just every play, every single play, you'll see them in a, in a cluster, then they'll break out to a three-by-one. Or in three-by-one, they'll break out into an empty. It's just mm-hmm. all over the place. Mm-hmm. And um, 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 Romeo Cornell told me this a while back. When teams do that, you, communication has to be out, out the roof. But whenever you communicate and doing all that stuff uh, – um, um, with a team like this, it, somebody's got to get a call. Somebody's got somebody's got to give a call. Somebody's got to get a call. It's two-way yeah. street when you talk mm-hmm. about mm-hmm. communication. You know, when they change, all right, hey, it's Lasso over here. If that person didn't hear, you, then then it's not on. So it, the communication has to be on. I mean, especially with the crowd going wild, mm-hmm. it's going to be a big deal because we don't want to give them nothing. They they're not going to be able to move the ball like they want to. Mm-hmm. But if we we mess up communication with different shifts in motion, and we're not, you know, we're confused about a person spinning down on you know on a back back call or or Mm -hmm. jet motion this way it's a lot of different moving parts that they have it's a simple offense but they do a lot of shifts and motions that that we we can handle we just have to communicate really well on defense this particular game and I I think I think we I I think you're 100% right from what I've seen in Florida right And, and the lucky part for us is we've seen that all spring We've seen that all summer. Yes. Mm-hmm. We've seen that through fall camp. But yeah. that's that's, that's we true. Do. Yeah. Yeah. We do shit. And you played Billy Napier not too long ago. Right. Oh, yeah. You yeah. played yeah. Yeah. like through two years ago. Right. So uh, I think we'll be able to handle that piece. Mm-hmm. But you are right. Like, you still got to handle that piece. Yeah. But when I we look at, like, this defense just as a whole, right, 
we're not lacking talent at no level. Mm-mm. I look at a freshman that is growing up, and he, uh, is it safe to say that's a grown man that should pay taxes at this point? <laughs> no question. You know, Colin Simmons is out no of his world. I look at Anthony Hill as a true sophomore with five and a half sacks sitting at this point in the season. It's crazy. Insane, yeah. right? And then the back end, I look at Jade Barron, and I'm like, a Thorpe semifinalist at this point, mm-hmm. right? And he actually said something recently that it, to me, represents what I see on that field from all 11 guys whenever that defense takes a field. He said, it means more when you work for it. Mm. Mm. You know what I mean? And, and that's the attitude. that they, they are where they deserve to be. Yeah, They mm-hmm. feel like they deserve to be exactly where they're at, and they're playing like it. Yeah, I don't think this Saturday would be no different from them. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're going to take our second commercial break. When we come back, I'm going to kick it to Rod because I want to hear what you do differently against a third-string quarterback. We are back on third and Longhorn covering the number five Texas matchup against Florida this weekend. And I'm going to kick it over to Rod and ask you, obviously, Graham Mertz started the season. He was their their guy, their transfer quarterback. And then they have the all-world freshman DJ Lagway who comes in when he gets injured. Obviously, Lagway goes down last week. The likelihood is we're going to see Aiden Warner this week, Mm. who is the third string transfer, as you mentioned, from Yale, who's a preferred walk-on. So going into this game, what do you do differently against someone like that who's in their first start? You're playing it with the home crowd at your back, all of these things. Do you... Do you just pressure the hell out of this kid, or what do you do? Uh, yeah, it's interesting, right? Usually with inexperienced quarterbacks, I think Michael Hawkins, right, Oklahoma, uh, I mean, Texas at their highest blitz rate of the year <laughs> against them. Uh, why not help them, uh, force them to process a lot of things, put a lot on their plate early? Uh, with this with this young man, I don't know if you have to do that. Now, I think it's Oklahoma. You didn't really fear their wideouts at all because they were down to their, like, fifth-string <laughs> wide receiver starting, and their top four wide receivers are out. In this game, Eugene Wilson, the third, is going to be out. I think he's their most talented overall mm-hmm. wide receiver. Mm-hmm. Uh, they also have uh, a, a young man, Elijah Badger. He was on the injury report, but, man, he, he could be a problem. He's averaging yeah. over 23 yards he, per reception. Yeah. yeah, he's a, he's a, he's a Arizona senior. Arizona State transfer. Yep, transfer. Yeah. He could be a problem, too. So they got some explosive guys on the outside, potentially. So I don't know if you'll get that Michael Hawkins game plan. Think about it against Michigan. They also had a backup quarterback that kind of struggled with the uh, the forward pass, if you will, the vertical <laughs> elements. Hey, still struggling. Still struggling with still it. Struggling with the forward yes, pass. Right? And the thing about what Texas did, though, the DBs, they became very aggressive in those games. They almost are sitting on routes, right? They are forcing the quarterback to have to prove to them that they can threaten them downfield mm-hmm. and make some NFL throws outside the numbers, deep down, uh, down the field, down the hash, and those quarterbacks couldn't do it. I think you'll see a similar uh, game plan here. I think the DBs will be really, really aggressive. I think every now and then you'll come with some exotic blitzes uh, to try to throw off Aiden Warner a little bit. And keep in mind, Michael Taft, uh, he's got an inside scoop on insider information on this young man because he's one of his best friends from high school oh. uh, play, plays high, played football uh, at Yale or at least he plays football at Yale, plays wide receiver and he was actually locker mates with Aiden Warner <laughs> So I don't know. Rod's he, got the deep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I like that. Taft, 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 Rod got the locker room. No, boys, Taft, Taft revealed that. So hopefully <laughs> Taft can find some film or at yeah. least get the inside scouting right. report because there's not a lot of information out about the young man. Uh, but I think you'll get DBs being really aggressive, man, sitting on routes, especially Eugene Wilson's not going to play. But if Elijah Badger doesn't play, who's their most explosive vertical threat, man, Texas will have no fear of those wide receivers. Guys, this is the best defense in the country. I yeah. got to double down on what uh, my man Jay Hills was talking about. I mean, I don't think we appreciate him enough. We're, we're too close to it and, and, and coming off last year right when they were so flawed especially in the secondary where now they're the best secondary in the country arguably right. they got the number one pass defense number one total defense number two scoring defense they're leading uh, college football in yards per play allowed by like I think like uh man it's like three point they're actually the only team that is allowing fewer than four yards per play in the country Ron give me five Ron yeah. like chat GPT man. no it's just, <laughs> and he just know everything no and what? they the fewest the fewest explosive plays Allowed. They've only allowed 13 20 plus yard plays all year. Only one, you probably remember it. What's the one 20 plus yard rush they've allowed this season? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 It don't happen. Yeah. It don't you know what, you know what, what, what You know what's <laughs> funny about this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know That's what's right. funny about this yeah. defense, though? And I think the reason that, that it lulls us to sleep is they're, they're so bend but don't break, right? Like, so they'll allow some yards but not a lot. But then you look up and it's the third quarter and there's three points on the on the board. And you're like, mm-hmm. oh, I thought I thought we, they've been moving the ball well. They haven't. Because right. you can't so, drive yeah. on them. Yeah. Because there's, you can't get an You're not getting those leaky yards. Right? You yeah. had 10 scoring drives you've allowed the last two weeks. Only two of those have been past 38 yards, guys. That's crazy. 
Think about that. But, but that, yeah, like, and, that's, and that's, honestly, <laughs> without all those turnovers, this defense, like, it's oh, crazy. Right. The stats the are James. insane. Yeah. The sudden change. That's, I mean, real. that's not. I'm not even gonna get into it and make me upset. But I'm. <laughs> imagine when we start playing up to our potential on offense. Amen, brother. But, but yeah, oh my God! Wait, Amen. who did and who did thought we'd been saying this at the at the start no. of the year, right? Like you could have never told me that. No, no I like, said the defense was going to be better. I said that. Oh, you did? Well, we I said they'd be better, that. but I but wanted better than the best secondary in the country. What I right, and you thought right, I didn't say they were going to be number no. one. I just thought <laughs> they were going to be better than last year. You that counts. That counts. That counts. That counts. We're getting a little bit of what I anticipated, but just not at this clip. I said, man, Colin, if he is who we think he is. And it lets Anthony Hill just grow into his role. I said that front being better mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. gonna take some pressure off the secondary. True. Like just as like an overall statement. Now, oh. did I think that that meant this? <laughs> Absolutely. I'm gonna say I did. Yeah. I 100 called it. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> but, but no, these guys are playing out of their minds. And the best part about it is because of the trusted leadership from that side, mm-hmm. like the Taps of the world that yeah. lead that group on that yeah. side, the yeah. Barons of that world that lead that group. Yeah. I have zero fear of a, of a letdown. No, that's a, a, that's a great point. In every position group, they got somebody. They got, dog they in got there. old. That, yeah, yeah. At yeah. Every, at every position. I think that's a key point, y'all. Yep. Yeah. All right, well, that kind of I think that kind of wraps up that side of the ball. Let's get to let's get to our very important special teams predictions mm, or, or or just update really is what <laughs> it is. And then I want to get into the game predictions which I'll uh, Hills you're going to get to start so, so start preparing it. But uh Florida has a Florida has a great a great place kicker with a great name by the way, Trey Smack. Smack. And Trey uh, Smack is 29 of 29 on extra points, 9 of 11 on field goals including Along of 53, he has 56 points this year, which, by the way, Bert edges him out with 57 points. But Bert's 39 and 39 on extra points and six of eight on field goals. And then Florida has a Florida has a very strong punter in Jeremy Crawshaw, another great name. 34 punts, he's averaging 47 yards a punt. And Michael Kearns at 15 punts, he's averaging 41 yards a punt. Uh, but yeah, I think it's look. We we still have not seen a lot of Bird Auburn this year, yeah. minus extra points, and I think that just shows you, like one, how much we score, and two, how much we go for it when when we're in that that yeah. region of the field in the red zone. So, uh, but all right, let's get to the the very important prediction. As you talked about, Hills, Texas favored by twenty one and a half with an over under of forty seven and a half. So. What's your prediction for this game? It, it goes over and we cover. Give me five tutties, two field goals. 41-17 Texas. Ooh. And, and, and it's because it's a combination of this pro football focus, number one ranked defense in the country, <laughs> along with uh, rest for Texas, along with beat up Florida team on the road, not a lot of hope, leaders gone, third string quarterback, walk on, transfer, Yale. Like this, just how this. do you get seventeen points? Exactly. No, I was <laughs> gonna say, man, yeah. How do they get seventeen? Uh, trash, so. trash, trash touchdowns, trash touchdowns. I, with I, the fourth string, yeah, like who, who's playing I, quarterback? I, that's what I'm I saying. Just, I could see it being out, like the game done, and then all of a sudden, here goes like it was forty one. Because they still got good play. But I then here you. goes yeah. this this touchdown I got, I got at the you. end of the game. Okay. End up on bad beats if we let it type thing. <laughs> uh, you, you know what I mean? Right. But but I don't I don't think it's a super competitive game. I think it. I think when you look at the score at the end of the game, Mississippi State, right? Like uh, second half Mississippi State, I should okay. say. Okay. Yeah. Where, mm-hmm. where like mm-hmm. you know, you looked up and it was like, oh, we didn't give up that trash touchdown. This score looks even worse, right? Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, but that that's I, I, my my. I'm not gonna get into it. Listen, <laughs> we still got some things we gotta prove. We still got some things we gotta prove. But I think it'll be 41, 41 seventeen. We looked at the clock. Yeah. Yeah. Was like, yeah. oh, I ain't gonna get into it. Ain't gonna, it's gonna take me about five. Yeah, minutes. Easily five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh! All right, Rob, what do, what do you got? Um, yeah, I don't know how they're gonna. I just don't know how they're gonna march the length of the field and score. So if they score, it's going to be on short fields, in mm-hmm. my opinion. And hopefully, the offense doesn't give them a short field with turnovers or, uh, you know, obviously Texas, you know, being their own worst enemy, self inflicted wounds, things of that nature. So I'm gonna go with a lower score. I'll go with them getting. 10 somehow yeah. I'll get 10 I'll give them respect yeah, somehow yeah 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 like, so I don't know how it happens somehow I'll Bulletin go with 10 board material yeah. again <laughs> somehow <laughs> get <Somehow>. 10 <laughs> well no it's because it's it's I think it's going to be Aiden Warner the yeah. third street walk on transfer yeah. quarterback I think it's I love to lead in the title and, you give yes. a third street walk on <laughs> yeah. from Yale yeah. Yeah. from Yale exactly I don't know why that hurts him in this yeah. situation super Usually smart helps, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Um, and I'll go Texas 30 I'll go 30 34 34 
34 10. 34 10? That is like no lie. Exactly 10. what I had Just, in my head. What's a Yale kid doing in Gangsville? <laughs> See, that's, not, that's why you're there. <laughs> that is an interesting. That's why we, yeah. we dock him. Well, he's yeah. from, he, I believe he's from, I think he's from Winter Park. Like, I think he's from, oh, okay. That, okay. from that area. Okay. Yeah, he is. From, like, that, which is, is Orlando. Orlando. This kid, yeah. kid didn't plan right. on playing. He wanted to go home. <laughs> He's, like getting this, he's getting this additional degree. Yeah, in. man. He's like, wait, I gotta go in. Yeah, he missed. He missed surfing. He was trying to. All right, go ahead. Yeah, Orlando, I, Orlando don't got the beach though. Was it, yeah. <laughs> oh, was it Disneyland? Got, I got that out there. Yeah. Disney World. There you go. Excuse me. You yeah. can tell who ain't with me. Bulletin board material. All over Bulletin. Oh uh, yeah. Give nah, me, give me go. thirty-seven, thirteen. Mm-hmm. I, I think the the mop up score that they get is a field goal rather than a touchdown. Okay. Okay. So I I'll go that route. 37-13. All right. I would say 38 to 10. 38 mm-hmm. to 10. Mm-hmm. So. See? All right. Yeah. Close. We're all right. close in the score. We'll yeah, see you. let's let's see what, we'll see who gets the closest. And uh yeah, well before before we wrap uh Hills, I know you you wanted to talk about this and and Ooh. I think we we, we've got a little bit of time, so I'm going to let you get into the – I'm just going to give you the mic and let you go into the changing landscape of college football. Yeah, like the – the I think – I see it all the time, right? And especially, like, I'm sure we all follow the accounts and, you know, Twitter can be a wild place. But, like, this the expectation around the transfer portal and what it is, what it isn't, and should we, like, wish a kid well? Should we, like, discard him and curse his name? Like, this is a – the college football that Fozzie Whitaker played in the early 1900s is a completely <laughs> different <laughs> than the one you played in the 1800s. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it just keeps changing. But no, like like college football today, parity is not just in competition on the field, right? Mm-hmm. There's a there's a relationship now, almost a business like relationship at the college level that exists, and it's past just NIL. It's past these kids getting some money. You know what I mean? Like there's now an, uh, a two-way street of mm-hmm. expectation and then change. Mm-hmm. It is more. It, it, it is it, more than it's ever been. It, it it now represents exactly what the league is, right? It, what was the kid? Well, not kid. Sorry. What was it? What was what was um the, the defense hand for the Jets? Um, he set out like Reddick. Uh, Reddick. No, Reddick. Reddick. Yeah. Hassan Reddick got to the Jets and for whatever reason didn't like some stuff and withheld his talent for the first, what, five, six games of this season, right? And we reported that as Hassan Reddick sitting out because it is an everyday occurrence at that level of business. Mm -hmm. What is now an occurrence at this level of business is kids are, majority of the time, a highly recruited kid Mm -hmm. is not going to sit down for two to three years. It's just, it's not happening. And what you hope is, is that it is a, a, a good change for everyone, right? Because one kid leaves us, another kid's opportunity. If somebody else is getting those reps at practice, mm-hmm. right? But also for that kid, he may go to a different situation, a fresh start, get mm-hmm. an opportunity to look in the mirror a little bit, make some changes, some adjustments, and get the opportunities that he thought he should have had at his previous location. All right. So when I look at this transfer portal stuff, I don't want us to 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 jump to conclusions, especially if we don't have that that knowledge of that relationship sure. or how things were going. Yeah. But more so, understand that this is now the business landscape of college sports. You, you know, what I'm saying? and it's just how I was looking at it with the news that's coming out about the young man that's going to be transferring out. I wish that man well. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I agree with absolutely. that. We need to we need to shift that perspective and stop vilifying kids for doing what's best for themselves. Right. right. I, I think that, and I think that 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 tends to get lost of like, oh, you know screw that kid he's leaving etc it's like no nah, let's go wish him well because we're gonna get te- texas is never gonna be short on talent right mm-hmm. like that's mm-hmm. never gonna happen so i think it's more about like how do we take care of the ones we have and wish the best to the other ones like we- we've seen it go both ways for us and and, and to be honest like just super honest saying the things that don't get said is that coaches take new coaching gigs all, all the time. Yeah. All the time. All the time. It's a business. They were it's a business. up until this era of college sport Coaches could have recruited a kid. Mm-hmm. Talk to mama. Meant, Talk to dad. And let me be clear. They mm-hmm. could have meant everything they yep. said. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. true. Yep. At that time, it could have been the 100% true. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But their situation changed. Yeah. Right. And they decided to take a different opportunity. Yeah. And they went and took that opportunity. And the kid didn't have it 
as easily accessible to go yeah. take a different well, opportunity. Yeah. Exactly. Well, and that gets lost in it too. We're referring to when we say, when we accidentally say kids, they are, they're 18, 19 they years old. Men, no. Yeah, and yeah. Yeah. your situation changes. You don't know, you could, you, you don't know what's happening with the kids personally. You don't know what's going on. And so to sit there and vilify a kid for, for saying, I, I'm not ready to do this right now. I need to go over here and change my perspective or change my scenery. I think I think that's, we need to start looking at it like that as opposed to like this this whole mentality of the past that is this chess piece in our, you know, mm -hmm. chess dream of whatever so, we're doing. Pro so. Probably, probably uh, the best way to say that to probably be not as judgmental, but more curious yeah. to what, you know what I mean? Cause we can easily be judgmental and say, Oh, yeah. you know, he's, you know, he's not patient enough. You got to develop and all this stuff. Everybody's situation is a little different. So, yeah. you know, look, we look at AD well. Mitchell, look at AD Mitchell. Oh, I yeah. look at him transferring, transferring from Georgia to Texas. Awesome. And you talk to a lot of the cats in Georgia and it was like, man, the boy can't stay healthy. Da -da 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 -da. He had a daughter. Yeah. Yeah. Right. She lived in Dallas. That was, that's the curious part. Like, he needed oh, to come back home. Why? Yeah. Like, he why? wanted to come back to Texas yeah. to spend more time with his daughter. Man. Yeah. It was Perfect. a lot easier Hate for them. That. It was yeah. a lot easier for his family to drive three hours down to Austin than it was getting to Athens, mm -hmm. which if you haven't been to Athens, you got to fly into Atlanta, get a rental car, <laughs> and, and it is a lonely, long, <laughs> absolutely nothing on the way drive. There's a Waffle House at some point. Athens is a great <laughs> town, though. Don't hate on Athens. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> My point is, we don't yeah. know. 100%. Yeah. So let's not act like we do. I think that's a great point. Well, that's a good place to wrap, too. That, that'll that wrap up Texas versus Florida, the preview. If you guys like what you're hearing, please like, subscribe, follow us on everything, YouTube, Spotify, Apple, wherever you do it. Shout out to SiriusXM if you're listening there, as well as the Longhorn Network. These are going to start going on the Longhorn Network as of this week, so we're looking forward to, to being on there. And uh, we will see you guys after the game. Hook up. Hook up.